I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Serhi Kravchenko, the CEO of Dexy. Serhi, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Hey, Ashton, thank you so much. Thank you for coming me here. Uh, excited to dive into launch pads, uh, Web3 startups, and uh, growth patterns for blockchain companies. I would love to start off our, our conversation, first of all, with sort of a high level on what you and your team have built at Dexy, and then we can dive into all the, all the details. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So first of all, I would like to uh, give some brief introduction of what exactly Dexy is. Uh, so basically, Dixie is a sort of like uh, harbor and builder for web products, uh, starting like from a, a original and common uh, like DAO protocol DAO stuff that are possible to be done easily without no code, uh, but obviously working fully on chain and fully fully transparent, fully uh, decentralized. And in the meantime, we also allow you to launch like uh, any other Web3 entity, uh, mainly like coins, for instance, like meme coins or something or anything else. Because literally you can, or you're creating a DAO or you're doing anything else, uh, you are easily just maintaining some sort of tokens or uh, adding uh, existing tokens to a sort of account abstraction, which you're managing, which is your treasury, which is your multi-stick or whatever it is. So it can sort as a DAO, it can sort as a smart contract to, for instance, launch your token sale for fundraise or, I don't know, like pump funds or, or something, whatever it is. So there are like, uh, there is a wide range of opportunities that I guess will touch base uh, on like here today uh, and so on and so forth. So literally, we just give some entry points to deploy your own uh, smart contract and interact with a wide library of Dixie protocol or any external D app or uh, like code base, uh, it is done with no code. You can use tokens, you can use NFTs, you can create your own tokens and so on and so forth. And you do have your own like uh, sort of uh, no code application or, na or native front end and back end, uh, which provides you data, which provides you dashboards, which provides you like easy user experience. So this is what we are basically building with Dixie. Very interesting. and. I've used some of the other launch pads like, like Pink Sale or even some of the exchanges have launch pads built into them uh, and they make it fairly straightforward. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of different things that you can do in, in Dexy. Um, is that the main competitive advantage or differentiation between some of these traditional launch pads is, is the decentralized part or what else is that? Yep, exactly. Uh, I guess that uh, right now, like, um, we can see that a lot of like meme coins or other like, uh, you know, uh, trends which appear in the market. I mean, they do use uh, some uh, sometimes like different solutions like like pump fund, like pink sale or something else or uh, like common TGs are happening uh, in some sort of decentralized launch paths or sometimes even on sexes. Uh, this is yeah, a white, uh, of course, white application, but what uh, makes it different uh, in Dixie is that you are allowed to do this in fully decentralized and community driven manner. Mm. Uh, you can, uh, for instance, like create a uh, token sale uh, and reserve some part of tokenomics uh, for like sort of DAO, you know, DAO adoption. Uh, where a community after participating in token sale can decide what to do with next. And uh, this will be fully managed by uh, the participants of token sales. For instance, you can send like 10% of your supply while 90 will remain in treasury. And then community can, of course, put something for liquidity, burn something later on, uh, allocate something for some market maker, KOLs, whatever it is. So it just gives you like a way to, you know, uh, have a fully uh, manageable, uh, pro programmable, uh, like sort of token launches, which can later uh, act like yeah, well, in very, very transparent and very decentralized manner, mm -hmm. uh, collective ownership, and so on and so forth. It just gives you more, uh, more application, more instruments. If you want to keep it simple, you can do this. If you want to keep it fake, you can do this. If you want to create a real, I don't know, like, uh, like 
real crowdfunding, real decentralized like uh, Kickstarter or something, you can do this as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're basically, in some way, uh, with Dixie, you're selling a part in decision making, not only a part in the token economy. So this is mm -hmm. uh, how it differs. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I feel like DAOs have been evolving over the years and more functionality, it's making it easier to bring functionality to the community to help uh, participate in the ecosystems and help grow. Do you think that the market uh, is, there's, there is a, dem a ripe demand? As I feel like especially in meme coins, perhaps, that there is a request for that DAO part of the startup. Hey, we, we want to participate, but we also want to have a say once we participate. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, for instance, like, as you can see right now, uh, I mean, starting even from the very, very basic, uh, like, I don't know, very uh, premier uh, meme coins on the market, like Shiba or something, I mean, they are, they're very, like, right now even faster, but uh, even those ones, even ancient ones, they are lacking activity. And this is what uh, the teams behind them, obviously there are some, uh, really start uh, to target, uh, like looking, you know, for, for some, I don't know, buying some DEXs, buying some uh, liquidity lending protocols, because uh, meme coins usually do something like that on probably second year of their existence or just when they are a bit exhausted in terms of their hype or something. So, uh, and so this is uh, what exactly Dixie also allows you to target. You can have some uh, initial incentive for your community to hold your assets you know, while like having a, as you said, as you said, having a say like in uh, some treasury. It's in not only like a snapshot or something where you can do some of the exchange decisions, but also in treasury, which uh, really has its value and which can uh, be allocated on some specific uh, activities or some specific businesses. So we just give you this, uh, you know, this leverage for your economy, for your token economy, uh, which uh, really belongs to any holder uh, by doing by doing a DAO. And, and so on and so forth. But because usually, yeah, usually yeah, main coins, they, they do lack this utility. And of course, when it's hype, when it's like fun and when calls are pushing it, obviously it's, uh, it makes some sense. But later on, as we see right now, for instance, during last, last two days on the market, of course, like this utility disappears and uh, yeah, they need some sustain, more sustainable models, they, uh, which they are looking for, I guess, uh, like uh, any time when they uh, really, um, perform sustainably. So when, uh, as a participant, let's let's say I go to Dexy, I see there's a project launching which has some DAO functionality. Did that functionality come out of the Dexy platform in that you're enabling some basic functionality of a DAO? Um, and, and then after the launch, is it within the platform or that's just a stepping stone to allow the participation of a greater DAO eco ecosystem? You know, where does that sort of start? Mm -hmm. So, uh, as, as I said before, like Dixie is sort of account abstraction. I mean, just by, by very, very, um, probably roof, uh, meaning of, of this like design, but, but just to better understand like how this works on, on tech layer, uh, each DAO on Dixie is a smart contract. So this smart contract can obviously own assets and can interact with any uh, other smart contract uh, or address or whatever it is, like uh, in both like Dixie smart contracts library or any other external library. So uh, you have this on-chain part, which allows you, as I said, to hold the treasury. You have so all the treasury and asset management features there uh, for your DAO. You can do this like as a DAO, or you can do this as a multi sig For instance, if you have like two, three uh, people, and you would like to, I don't know, have some multi signature but between your accountant and your uh, like uh, director, or just between a group of friends who are making some, you know, collective actions, you can also do that. This is also a sort of DAO, uh, by my understanding. Uh, so, uh, and in the meantime, we also have all the off-chain experiences because we have uh, own backend uh, for all that. If you want to have some um, discussions, you have them in the place. If you want to do any 
uh, I don't know, like uh, of chain proposal. You can also do that. Uh, obviously, we'll, we can make some snapshot of your holders and do an of chain uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. If you want to have notifications in Dixie, you can also a vote from Telegram, for instance, because we do send notifications to Telegram, to uh, Discord, to email, uh, whenever you wish. And if your tokens are approved already on the platform, you can uh, also like initiate this transaction from the Telegram. If you wish, uh, yeah, you have like all the data statistics, you have automation, you can provide some incentives for governance, distribute some rewards, distribute tokens run token sales, all those like on chain uh, templates uh, for any actions or even like interactions with Uniswap, with Lido, or whatever it is mm -hmm. with any protocol, they are all done on Dixie and you can do them uh, without like uh, any line of the code because existing solutions, uh, existing solutions on the market, they are uh, like usually covering some parts of, you know, some parts of those utilities. They, or they have like uh, multi sig like nozzles or they have like, uh, I don't know, forum like discourse, or they do have just uh, off chain like snapshot, or they do have like uh, on chain like tally or something like that, but they don't have anything in the same place. You need to maintain two, three, four uh, different solutions. Uh, in Dixie, we have all that. And uh, our key, I guess, key benefit and key feature is uh, incentivization models that are uh, super programmable and uh, very easy to implement on Dixie because we understand that, especially in this world, you know, uh, many apps on Telegram and anything else, we see that uh, like uh, user acquisition cost is uh, mm -hmm. right now uh, pretty affordable. Amount of users is uh, growing very fast. And you just need to have clear and uh, easy environment to incentivize them and onboard them. And uh, in Dixie, we do have uh, those uh, features like uh, available. You can do this uh, for governance. You can do this for uh, contribution. Once people are making decisions, once, once people are uh, 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 participating in decisions, you can uh, distribute them with some sort of reward. And this is basically, yeah, I guess one of the key feature that uh, Dixie as a governance solution can uh, can uh, propose to you. That's actually really great to hear. Uh, I've participated in some governance before and I often miss it because you know you have to check either their specific page of their website or they posted a link in the social but then it, it's gone immediately. So to be able to participate more integrated into Telegram or the other social apps, I feel like that's a huge advantage and make it easier for people to just vote from where they are. So I, I really like that, Sergey. So I'm, I'm going to look into that further. And I'm curious on, on, the, on the voting structure, uh, are there different options available for, for the launch pads? For example, can, can they make it one person, one vote or one token? Per, per vote, so the, you know the top token holders will have the biggest say, or other you know preferred shares or like a council. Different ways that the structures can be created when they launch on the launchpad. Yep, exactly. It's a very good question because uh, basically, I mean, we uh, like to remain very flexible here as everywhere else, uh, to be honest, but. The key uh, frameworks that we uh, support are, of course, like simple linear uh, voting system, which is very common to any specific simple needs, just like a very, very, uh, uh, like easy, I don't know, easy uh, transition of uh, democracy to, uh, to on chain. And we also do have um, like some non linear functions, which are uh the continuation of uh quadratic voting which was i guess anticipated by vitalik uh and others but was never like uh, implemented in life in a good i guess in a good shape we've done this we made our own uh, non-linear functions based like from polynomials not like quadratic but uh thir third fourth grade and it's something like uh, between uh, quadratic and uh, linear voting which allows you to achieve basically two things. First of all, you can uh, be sort of like anti plutocratic where the more votes you hold on uh, one uh, wallet, the less like this function increase. So we uh, just demotivate you to keep all the tokens in one hands 
of course, like you can distribute them on uh, big amounts of tokens, uh, big, 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 amount, big amounts of wallets, but still it uh, gives some limitations for uh, uh, controlling everything, uh, you know, in single hands. And in the meantime, uh, we also give some protection from signals because uh, if we are talking about quadratic voting, uh, there is some, um, basically some uh, sort of uh, exploit on the beginning of function when it has like sort of, uh, you know, this exponential growth uh, by distributing the votes on a uh, uh, big amount of uh, wallets with small amount of tokens, you can exploit it. In Dixie, we uh, do uh, like uh, mitigate it. So our basic function has those two features. It allows to be anti-plutocratic. It allows, uh, to, in the meantime, to mitigate all the risks of nonlinear functions. And lastly, mm -hmm. we also allow you to uh, provide different coefficient, different ratio of fault calculation for various uh, parties. If you do want to build something on top of your democracy, like uh, meritocracy, uh, where the, the power belongs to competent people, where you can invite, like, I don't know, uh, Vitalik, you can invite BlackRock or anyone else, like, to be a public representatives of your organization, delegate them your tokens, uh, so they will have a higher voting ratio when a simple holders. In the meantime, you will pay rewards to them. Uh, they will... Uh, like mm. just receive receive passive reward not passive active rewards uh, as they are contributing creating proposals and so on and so forth people are also delegating to them and they receive commission from uh, their rewards so this is sort of economy that we are exploring right now in Dixie and various other use cases and uh, the last last thing that we also support is just a custom uh, logic you can always deploy your own contract for instance if you have staking and you want like your holders to be uh, you know calculated uh, on their votes depending on how much they stake for how long they stake and so on you can always connect your own smart contract it's not an issue because dictate the building block uh, system you can always you know uh, add your cust customization whenever you need mm -hmm. that's it's really interesting and it's great to hear about the the, the expert uh, opinions or active contributors you know, to, to have people like Vitalik, for example, on the uh, on the preferred list of, of voters or active, then obviously that can drive a lot of uh, activity to to a DAO, but also can show, hey, there are actually experts and not just people that are voting that are usually everyone is self incentivized or, you know, what's going to help me, but not necessarily help the DAO. And you have to build that balance of how are we going to create a cohesive uh, autonomous organization um, that actually goes somewhere when there's a million different people voting that n not are necessarily aligned with each other. Exactly, exactly. So we so we basically find you know these three pillars. It's like uh, motivation, uh, community, and uh, transparency, right? So you you need to have of course the community. You need to uh, give some transparent tools so they are uh, they feel. Uh, you know, their influence on uh, what's going on there. And you have obviously some incentive, uh, which can pay off any, any contribution, any, you know, uh, effort. Yeah, well, it sounds like a, a beautiful utopia and the way that uh, <laughs> all corporations are transitioning into uh, eventually digital and, and DAOs, it's going to be a wild ride. So it's great to see all this functional functionality coming out from Jexy. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of road bumps on the way and trying to figure out the right way to digitize a corporation that can have thousands or millions of actions being taken. Um, are there successful use cases or you know, s s social studies that have actually been done with the technology already? Sure, sure. So first of all, uh, the Dixie protocol itself, like it's managed uh, by, by Dixie DAO and the smart contracts uh, of Dixie are also like managed uh, by Dixie DAO. So it's like a decentralized organization. I mean, uh, which is uh, fully, fully managed by all the Dixie holders. We do have our own like incentive alignments. We do have our own goals. We do uh, like implement all the transaction uh, which uh, which is needed like from our treasury which is needed uh, to upgrade contracts at the DAO and all the budget allocations are are like a sort of uh, 
sub DAO meta governance uh, structure where we uh, do like create new DAOs, which are sub DAOs to Dixie uh, as a working groups. So we, we do utilize this very widely. Uh, and this brings us a lot of transparency. In the meantime, uh, we do have various uh, like upcoming use cases which are right now like uh, working on. We have, for instance, uh, uh, Boxy uh, DAO, which is the meme uh, token that was launched on Dixie. Mm -hmm. And just performing very good. So right now, it's like the second biggest DAO by TVL on BNB chain. Uh, as, as, I, as, I, as I remember, they were launched uh, uh, on Dixie, like, you know, like initial treasury offering meme coin, as they minted the token on Dixie, then launched the token sale uh, from the treasury and uh, all the like, liquidity maintaining, everything was done uh, as a proposal from, uh, you know, like from uh, the participants on this token sale. Uh, one of other interesting uh, like use cases is HOT protocol, with whom we right now are developing our pilot, uh, you know, pilot uh, use case on TON ecosystem. Uh, this will be like, probably it's like a, a small spoiler, but uh, your watchers can probably, uh, you know, <laughs> have this, have this uh, insight from me. It's uh, right now like hot, hot protocol is going to be the first like uh, uh, DAO and one of the first like basically the biggest uh, use cases on TON. They have 16 million uh, active users right now in Telegram. Uh, they have, uh, I guess, 3.5 million uh, daily active users, and they are on-chain users. They, it's not like uh, bots and Telegram. They are on-chain users with balances, so they, they perform good. And uh, we are creating a sort of also a multi-layer uh, meta uh, governance, you know, uh, structure for, for them, where various communities inside the political system they will be able, like, it's obviously Telegram chats, uh, just simple Telegram chats, they are entering this uh, wallet to farm uh, token. And they, uh, I mean, they they will all become DAOs. They will all become DAOs on Dixie. It's more than, I guess, 200,000 uh, communities right now, as I remember those statistics. And they will be a sort of, uh, like, a sub-layer under uh, the main core DAO of HOT. Uh, so this will be like some, some, some use case where any Telegram chat can, can become, uh, a DAO, uh, in, in, in hot wallet. So this, this will be our, our use case as well. So right now I'm working on it. Wow. That sounds great. Uh, the number two on, on BNB and I know the ton ecosystem is, is very up and coming and especially being integrated into Telegram. I feel like that's the key differentiator to active participation in DAOs, making it more exciting, making it more interactive, making it more community driven. So I'm, I'm definitely going to look uh, more into hot protocol and, and what Dixie's, uh, how that's developing. Um, I'm curious what else is on the roadmap for growth in, in Dixie and what else the team might have up their sleeve in the coming months leading up to the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah, so, uh, as you also like probably mentioned right now, yeah, for sure. Like we envision this, uh, uh, like movement towards TVM, towards Telegram, understanding that a lot of, uh, really a lot of like, uh, value, uh, and a lot of, uh, like new adoption, new way for, of adoption is coming from there. It's very easy to, uh, really onboard and adopt users from Telegram. So we're looking on it. Uh, and uh, one of the, like, I guess, key new developments there will be also an AI governance because we mm -hmm. see a big potential in automation. Uh, we're working on creating the AI agent that will be able to uh, automate governance. So literally, it will be a DAO, which consists of, uh, like, thousands of various AI experts in their specific niche, like an AI uh, module like for instance, specific like for uh, economic expert, mathematic expert, I don't know, development expert, security, whoever, marketing, mm -hmm. market making, uh, and so on and so forth. And we have them connected into a DAO, which also has like all the uh, access to on-chain and uh, organizations can delegate their tokens to them. 
and uh, yeah, basically they'll be be managed uh, by by the DAO. The DAO is always educated, uh, as it is based on AI. It is educated on what what decisions are worse, what decisions are are better. It's like performing more and more like a good job, and it's also uh, can be connected to APIs of. Uh, Twitter, sentiment, whatever, and have all the access to actual information of not only your organization, but the market as well, and uh, take the decisions or offer some solutions uh, according to all this big scope. So we have uh, even several developments, developments in this direction, I guess, as we have a sort of AI agent, we also do have... Uh, um, so some like other deeper AI layers uh, for that as well, probably our own uh, uh, inference uh, models and so on and so forth. But mostly it's just an automated uh, AI uh, agent for, for your government. So uh, mm -hmm. our goal is like to, to uh, also to implement this by the end of this year. Um, like, I guess it's, it's upcoming at the beginning of Q4. So we can say that Dixie will allow you to build a, a fully programmable uh, economy and governance for your uh, DAO where you can distribute incentives uh, and where you can automate it. And uh, this this could be a sort of like, you know, a tri a triangle uh, economy between uh, retail, uh, which is looking for some, you know, incentives and for some good investments, for some good community. Uh, for there, especially in the upcoming bull, I hope it's still not canceled. Uh, in the meantime, you have organizations which are allocating, you know, some, some incentives in, in their uh, token economy. Uh, as it, as it always has been uh, like like this, like you always have some part of token economy which is allocated for some sustainable distribution. And you also do have AI agents that can automate this governance as uh, users can delegate their tokens to them, organizations can mm -hmm. also do this. You have experts who are, um, uh, who can be like a sort of like open marketplace of competence. Uh, and by doing so, you can also achieve a really fair and high quorum in DAOs. Because right now, like quorums have, are five percent or something, and circulating is uh, very similar. But uh, like uh, by doing so, by doing delegations to AI agents to experts, you can achieve a fair like fifty-one percent quorum, as uh, the distribution of supply can be uh, like. Uh, delegated uh, in this way where like uh, quorum is never achievable by a single party uh, is a team or something else so you can also build like a real autonomous uh, uh, problem uh, like uh, uh, yeah really autonomous and decentralized uh, decentralized decision making organization uh, and uh, yeah of course we also do have other like minor things and milestones that like scale into uh, some like uh, remaining uh, EVM chains, layer two, some big partnerships, big use cases. We have some something in pipeline, like uh, in terms of uh, basically building the higher performance of our application. But main main focuses right now are, of course, as I said, AI, uh, Tone and Telegram, and uh, and uh, just big use cases in the RWA uh, sector, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I felt like AI had to play a role there in just m making it easier, making more automation. And I could definitely see some people preferring to be passive community members, token holders, being able to delegate to the AI saying, hey, you know, make the best decision for me or for the company, for the DAO. So that's great to see. I'm definitely going to check that out when it goes live. Um, and now if I wanted to start participating in the Dexy DAO and also check out the other platforms that have launched and the DAOs there. What is the best way to get started into the DAO? Yep, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Dixie has like its own application. And as I told you, it's uh, sort of like Explorer where all the DAOs listed uh, made in Dixie and all the entities are, are there. You can check it there. All the proposals, all the members, it's all like uh, on chain and uh, transparent. And also like you can just uh, uh, press a create button there and you have like all the steps that you need to yeah, to create a DAO, you don't need you don't need to like use any code. You can also, uh, as I said, or sorry, no, I did not basically say it, but 
you also can, uh, I mean, use uh, not only tokens or NFTs, uh, like fungible or non-fungible tokens, you can also use coins. I mean, this is, I guess, the only DAO solution where you can use native gas, uh, gas coins uh, for governance, meaning that if you have your L2, or something, you really want to have a DAO, you can mm -hmm. also like create this DAO uh, on Dixie using native coins. Because we have this logic realized, but of course, like you probably will need to write, write to us to have a sort of partnership. And uh, uh, so, so, so we will deploy your network or something like that. Uh, we also have basically those use cases of common uh, where Dixie will be used to manage blockchains. Um, and uh, yeah. All the simple steps, you choose governance methods, you choose, uh, fill all the metadata, you fill just simple like uh, steps to uh, have all the parameters for voting uh, there and it's done. You can just simply pay some gas fee and uh, it will be done. Dixit uh, isn't taking any commissions for creating entities, so uh, you, can, you can check it, check it out. That's great to hear. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking it out all myself. I can leave the link to uh, the, the Dexy DAO and, and the, the main platform in the show notes below for the viewers. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see this development in DAOs and just the further participation of everyday people in digital organizations. So thank you, Serhi, for explaining all this and for growing the Dexy DAO and for enabling DAO functionality in other Web3 startups that are happening. Uh, it, it's a very exciting time and transition into a more truly democratic uh, organizations um, and it's just more efficient as well than traditional corporations. So I feel like there's a lot of advancements happening. Um, I would love to follow up in the near future uh, with those AI agents and all the other updates. And, and until then, all the best uh, with everything at Dexy that you and your team are doing. Thank you, thank you, Ashton, so much for getting here. Very good talk. Thank you for that.